Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at the Geekom A7 Mini PC with the Ryzen 9 7940HS with Radeon 780M graphics. This video is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. So all opinions are my own. They don't know I'm making this video, but it looked good. Thought I'd pick one up and here we are. First impressions, this is probably the nicest box of any mini PC I have ever seen. It looks like Geekon really care about the unboxing experience, which is really nice to see. Taking a look inside now, you have a foam pad. I think this is the first time I've seen a foam pad with one of these boxes. And directly under that, you get like a little thank you card, which is nice. Do you want to give it a read? Pause the video or something? Very wholesome stuff. Venturing now deeper into the box, you get all your accessories. And the first thing you'll see is the smallest 120 watt power adapter you will ever see. Just to compare, here is a normal 65 watt power adapter from like a standard Lenovo laptop. And volume wise, they're almost the same. So I don't know how they're doing that, but it is really nice. I've always found it a bit ironic when you have a mini PC that has a power adapter bigger than the PC itself. Kind of defeats the point, but not here. Great job, Geekom. You're also given a HDMI cable, which is great. And then you're given the other half to your power supply. So I have a UK cable because I'm in the UK. Nothing too exciting here. And finally at the bottom, they give you a little instruction manual in color, sparing no expense. Nice and simple, so that's cool. Let's put these away and take a closer look at the PC. First impressions, this thing is beautiful. It looks like a scaled down Mac mini, I like they're obviously taking inspiration from it, but in my opinion, a Mac mini should be this size. You get tons of connectivity, so much so that I'm just gonna put a little box on the screen with all the information because otherwise I'll be here all day. But essentially you get everything you need and more and you even get a 40 gigabit USB-C port as well as an SD card reader on the side, which is a nice surprise. On the bottom cover, you have four rubber feet which are hiding the screws that you need to undo. These feet are glued down, but if you have a small flathead screwdriver, you can sort of pry them off. It's not too difficult, but that bottom plastic cover does scratch easily, so try not to scratch anything. When you take off the bottom plate, there is one cable you need to be aware of, so undo that little tape bit, and then you can flip it over easier. Under another set of four screws, there is a metal heatsink for your components. And here's something I noticed that I really like. It's that both this heatsink and the bottom plastic cover both have arrows on them, telling you which direction they need to sit in when you put them back. And I just think that's really thoughtful. Not a lot of companies think about stuff like that, and it can be really helpful if you're taking this thing apart. And here's a look on the inside. You have dual channel RAM and only one SSD, so you can't add another. The modules you get are 16 gigabyte DDR5, 5600 megahertz. And as I have the two terabyte model, you are given a Acer N5000CN, which I've never seen before, but I imagine it's more popular in the Chinese market. Now, before we get onto some tests, I just wanna show you how small this thing is. So here it is compared to some PS4 games. It is the width of two PS4 games. Like I think you could actually put this in your pocket, genuinely. You're given a very standard looking BIOS, pretty much the bare minimum. There's no like power adjustment here, but that's okay. On Geekbench 6, you get a single core score of 2432, which scores higher than an R9 5900X, which is what I happen to use, so this score makes me a little bit depressed. For multi-core, it almost scores the same as a Threadripper 3960X, which is a four-year-old chip that was $1,400 when it came out. Don't know how they're doing this, but what a time to be alive. Moving on to the graphics score, you get a score of 33,248, which is around the same as a GTX 1060, which is great. Like people still use 1060s. I remember this is running on integrated graphics. This whole system is about a third of a size of a 1060. So really impressive stuff. Moving on to our final test, we have Time Spy on 3D Mark with a score of 3309. Starting off with SSX3 on PCSX2, as we do with pretty much every video, you get a really solid performance. Six times native, which is around 4K, you get very, very close to perfect. Five times native is almost spot on 50, which is what you want. Doing the same test now on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, you get a locked 
50 FPS experience. Very occasional stutter, but I didn't notice anything. Really solid performance. This thing is an emulation beast. Moving on to Ballistic MG now, which is a low spec PC game. Get an average of 181 FPS at 1080p. Buttery smooth. No complaints from me at all. For Battlebit Remastered at 1080p, we get an average of 86.4 FPS. Very playable. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, you're not going to max it out or anything, but you can get a solid 60 FPS without any issues. For Counter Strike 2, we get an average of 68.1 FPS, which again is very playable. It's not exactly competitive, but you can still have a good time. For PUBG, I did two tests. I did 1080p high and I did 1080p low. If you're going to use this machine on PUBG, you're going to want to have it on the absolute lowest settings you can possibly have. And even then, you're going to experience an occasional drop below 60, but it's not that often. I'd say it's suitable for playing occasional games with your friends, but if you want to take this game seriously, get something else. And finally, moving on to Helldivers 2, my new favourite game. Testing at 1080p on the absolute lowest possible settings, I've got an average of 33 FPS, with an occasional stutter below. This is technically playable, but I wouldn't really recommend it. When your missions get very hectic, you'll really notice the lack of power. So if you really want to play this game, I'd recommend a higher spec machine or just get a PS5. Let's move on to an audio test. So overall, what do I think? Well, let's start off with the good. Aesthetically, this thing is beautiful, even though they kind of did copy the Mac Mini, but that's okay. The Mac Mini is also very beautiful. There's a reason why Apple haven't changed the design in about 12 years. Second of all, the unboxing experience is really, really good. It's the best of any mini PC I've experienced so far. And last of all, it performs really, really well. It scores the highest of any mini PC I have tested so far. So I guess this is my new favorite. Moving on to the bad or to be improved on section, this thing can get quite loud. And I can't really blame Geekon for this because this thing is just so small that it can't thermally dissipate enough heat. Like even after a heavy load, you'll still hear the fans for like a good 15 minutes. This AMD Ryzen 9 is an absolutely stellar chip, but it does use a lot more power than something like the Mac Mini, which doesn't make any noise at all. And my last gripe, it's not really a gripe, but you can't mount this anywhere. It doesn't come with any mounting solutions like all the Minis forums do. So if you want to put it behind a screen, you, you can't do that. And I imagine that's a conscious decision because they've made this thing so nice to look at that you'd actually want to look at it instead of just hiding it away. But it would have been nice to have the option. But overall, this is a really solid machine. And if you want to pick one up, I have links down below. Again, this video is not sponsored. All the opinions are my own, but if you do decide to buy it through Amazon, I'll get a little bit of kickback at no extra for you. So, win-win. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.